Welcome to the Lincoln City Council meeting of September 13th, 2021, in accordance with LB 898. Please be advised that a copy of the Open Meetings Act is posted at the back of the chamber by the northwest door. Let us all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a brief period of silent meditation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The order of business of the City Council is as follows. The clerk will call the items listed on the agenda. Under public hearing, anyone wishing to speak on an item should come forward after the clerk reads that item. The Council shall require any member of the public desiring to address the Council to identify themselves, the name of an organization or group, including an address that you may be representing by such person or group unless that address requirement is waived to protect the security of the individual. The applicant may then make one short rebuttal. Each speaker should begin by stating their name, address, organization, or group, and whether you are speaking in favor or in opposition to that item. Testimony is limited to five minutes per speaker. After all public hearings, the Council will vote on resolutions and items listed under third reading. On the second and last Mondays of the month, immediately prior to adjournment, anyone may speak on any issue not on the agenda for that date nor plan for a future agenda. Will the clerk please call the first item of business? Our first item of business today for Monday, September 13, 2021 is our Mayor's Award of Excellence. Good afternoon, Chairman Bowers, members of the Council. It's nice to be back once again to celebrate the work of our incredible city team. Um, the Mayor's Award of Excellence for December 2020 is presented to Gardener Steve Harris of the Parks and Recreation Department's Northwest District. Um, Steve was nominated by Susan Larson Rodenberg of the Lincoln Parks Foundation in the category of Customer Relations for his work to prepare the Hub and Soul concert series in Union Plaza. The maintenance of this six acre park is Steve's primary responsibility. And in 2019 and 2020, the Lincoln Parks Foundation partnered with the Parks and Rec Department to organize the Hub and Soul community event to celebrate our local parks and music and food. I know many of you have enjoyed those events. They are a treasure. Um, in its first two years, the event attracted large and diverse crowds on Thursday nights in August and September. And in 2019, average weekly attendance was 450 people. The third annual Hub and Soul series kicked off last Thursday, and it continues to thrive as a very safe outdoor community celebration. Uh, Susan Larson Rodenberg says the success of Hub and Soul can be attributed to a strong team of committed individuals. You'll see them at the events with their Hub and Soul t-shirts, and maybe someone's here with a mask that says Hub and Soul. <laughs> uh, However, Susan has made clear that without a canvas, an artist cannot create and the magic cannot happen. And with the blessing of director Lynn Johnson, Harris was that artist and he has made sure that Union Plaza is beautiful, clean and safe for the event each week. And he has done everything from, from, that, from tending to the 76,000 square feet of perennial beds in the park to putting out fence panels, mowing, trim, making sure things are trimmed and pruned providing electricity panels for the amphitheater. He's installed shade structures, supervised his crew, assisted volunteers, and had a presence at every event. In Steve's own words, and this is, I think, very moving, he says, my goal is to take care of this place like my house and my yard. And when you have a party, things are ship shape. It is the little things that make the difference. Susan says Steve is professional, accessible, and dependable, and takes pride in his work with a careful eye for detail and enthusiasm for the event. She says, in short, Steve's effort was a key factor in realizing our vision for Hub and Soul for the past two years. She says, we are all extremely grateful for Steve Harris, not only for his contribution and support for Hub and Soul, but for his ongoing commitment and devotion to ensuring that Union Plaza is a beautiful gem for all of Lincoln to enjoy. So I hope you'll please join me in congratulating Steve for his hard work and commitment to the city of Lincoln.
And at this point, uh, we have a couple of speakers. Director Lynn Johnson from the Parks and Rec de Department is here, and he'll be followed by Susan Larson Rodenberg, who also would like to say a few words about Steve. Thank you, Mayor. It is a great pleasure to be here this afternoon to recognize Steve's good work. Um, I think it's important to know that Steve, as of last month, just completed 20 years of dedicated service to the city of Lincoln. <laughs> Steve was initially hired to be part of the public gardens team that manages public gardens as well as some of our other most beautiful public landscapes in Lincoln. Um, a few years ago, actually probably several years ago at this point, we asked Steve whether we, he would have an interest in just stepping into a leadership role at Union Plaza to care for that very special public landscape. And uh, he has taken a very personal pride, as you've heard, in making sure that the landscape is well managed and that people who visit that site really have a wonderful time. Um, I always think that, the, that a hallmark of a good public event is the very good planning into the, uh, the the careful attention, excuse me, that goes into good planning and the details of organizing the event. Um, obviously, the intent is for people to just have a great time and not have to think about all the details that go into to making that happen. And I would say that Steve is inc incredibly adept at that, of making sure the details have been carefully thought through and that they've also been carefully executed. So Steve, Thank you, and, and congratulations on this recognition. Hello, I'm Susan Larson Rodenberg. I'm happy to be here today. Thank you, Mayor. Um, in 2012, 2012, the Lincoln Parks Foundation celebrated the opening of Union Plaza, made possible by more than 500 donors and successful private pu public-private partnerships. Maybe I should take off my mask. Um, campaign co-chairs were Mike Seacrest, Patty Pansing Brooks, TJ McDowell, and my dad, Roger Larson. The vision for this three-block park was to provide a community gathering space for discovery and celebration. However, it remained underutilized for the first few years. Attempts were made, but nothing really got off the ground. In 2018, Doug Dittman, who's back there, <laughs> my partner in crime, we had a, an idea for a music series to bring together neighbors and community for a free event that celebrated local food and local music. Our big idea, thankfully, was embraced by Maggie Stuckey Ross, Executive Director of the Lincoln Parks Foundation, and Lynn Johnson, director of our Parks and Recreation Department. They understood the need to have events to get people out to enjoy our beautiful park. Steve Harris was on board from the get-go. We are very, very fortunate in this community to have such a dedicated park staff. I've had the opportunity to work with Lynn over the last 20 years, and they are just simp simply spectacular. The can-do positive culture starts at the top with Lynn, and as you can see, it goes throughout the team. Steve Harris is the cream of the crop. Steve takes a lot of pride in his work, and yet he's very humble and shies away from attention. Well, sorry, this is your lucky day. <laughs> <laughs> we talk every week about his ideas on how we can make the event even better. You've heard Mayor and Lynn go into more details on that, his impact on this event. In short, we just couldn't do this without Steve. And Steve, we're so grateful for you. Please join us for one of the upcoming Hub and Soul events, which continue on Thursday evenings until October 7th. We had a couple bad weather days for, to start us off. So our first event was last week. So we'll, we'll pick up and have it Thursday nights through October 7th. You'll see community. You'll see people enjoying this amazing park, just as our donors and campaign leaders envisioned. Thank you for celebrating Steve Harris today. Steve, would you like to say a few words and maybe introduce us to any family you may have here? Yes, I'd like to thank everyone that 
Susan, especially for the nomination without her, uh, it may have gone unnoticed. My wife is here, Cindy. She's a, been a great supporter, and uh, I couldn't have done all of this without, first of all, her and a number of people I didn't know that encouraged her. She's the reason I garden, honest. And uh, it was a great experience working with uh, the Public Gardens crew. I learned a lot. Um, and it's, it's been an ongoing challenge and one that's been very rewarding and fulfilling. Everybody asked me, well, Who's your supervisor? Well, my supervisor may be <laughs> Jeff, but uh, the people I work for are you, the citizens of Lincoln, and thank you very much for Susan and nominating me for this award and you for making it. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next up on our agenda is sections one and two. Is there anyone here that would like to speak on any of these items? Thank you. Good afternoon. Johansi Christie, city attorney. Yay. Um, I have the pleasure of, I think, introducing two people to serve on the um, charter revision uh, committee. Uh, first is Mr. Emery, who probably does not need a introduction but briefly I think post office I think when he retired from the post office it was at least 35 years of of service uh, I know that after that he was on the council set where you guys are sitting now for I believe eight years 2007 to 2015 I know he has served on the um, Malone board as well uh, he has just been very active in the community as I'm, I'm sure all of you are aware and we are quite frankly, very lucky to have him serve, to agree to serve on this uh, committee. So it's my pleasure to introduce him, and I hope you will uh, approve this nomination. I'll invite him up to say anything that he might wish to say. Believe it or not, I really don't have anything to say. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I will say this, as Steve was talking, I, I think it's part of what makes Lincoln such a wonderful place is the number of people who will volunteer and do things. So the area that I grew up in, if you didn't volunteer, they volunteered you. So <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm at your humble service if you so desire. Are there any questions or comments from the council at this time? Thank, thank you very much. Well, I have something I want to say. Uh -oh. um, you know, Northeast Lincoln uh, has really always had strong leadership uh, and strong uh, council members with strong representation. And you are the one who set the bar. You're the one who set the standard for what it means to be a city council person and especially what it means to be a city council person from Northeast Lincoln. You, as the Northeast rep, you've left big shoes to fill, but it's really an honor to follow in your footsteps. And so when it comes to any committee or any appointment, I can't think of a better person who will do what's best for the city and best for my neighborhood and Northeast Lincoln. So thank you. I appreciate you, that. However, there were three ladies that, that were before me who set a pretty good standard for me. So um, to, to Colleen and, and to all those people who were Patty, those that were in front of us, um, they told me what to do. So <laughs> thank you very much. Thanks, Doug. I have one more. Um, also, uh, before you today is the nomination of Andrea Snowden. Um, Andrea has um, also served the community um, for many, many years, and we are um, also very lucky to have her. I know that uh, she's currently at Emeritus, but I know that before that, I believe Baylor Evnen and then she was also at the public defender's office um, and her some of you may know this I'll, I'll be brief but her uh, father is also he taught at the law school for many many years and I had the pleasure of having him um, for at least one class 
in one of his uh, later years of teaching at the law school. And I, I feel very, very fortunate to have him as a professor. And we are very, very fortunate to have her uh, agree to serve uh, the city in this capacity. And I hope that you will approve her nomination as well. And I will invite her up to say whatever she would like to say. And go Lynx. <laughs> Good afternoon, I'm Andrea Snowden, Count, or Chairman Bowers, the rest of the council. Thank you very much for considering my appointment to the Charter Revision Commission. Uh, I feel like I got the short end of the stick here having to come up after Mr. Emery. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I am a lifelong Lincoln resident. Um, I've been an attorney for about 22 years now, practiced in both private practice and for county government. I'm now in-house counsel at Emeritus. I'm a very um, uh, enthusiastic uh, member of the Lincoln community and it would be honored if you would approve my appointment to the Charter Revision Commission so I could serve uh, in that capacity. Happy to answer any questions that anyone has. Are there any questions at this time? Oh. Okay, seeing none, thank you. thank you so much for your willingness to serve. Thank you. Good afternoon, council members. Randy Jones, Director of Aging Partners, Department of Aging. Um, I'm pleased to introduce a request to you to appoint Irina Garakian to the Aging Partners Area-Wide Council. It's an advisory council for us. Um, she's fulfilling a um, uncompleted full term. Irina has been in Nebraska for 30 years. She's a, uh, she's a new American. Uh, she's a, a linguist by trade and uh, is fluent in Russian, Armenian, and Ukrainian. And she's been helping us with translation to aging partners for many years. And um, she wants to join the advisory council because she knows what it's like to be a new American. And her goal is to make that process easier and to help new Americans access resources in the community and how to contribute to the community's good. So I think that's uh, very favorable. She's out of the country right now, but I would look forward to introducing her to you when she comes back. Thank Are there you. any questions or comments from the council? No, sir. Seeing Thank none. you. Thank you so much. Anyone else that wishes to speak on any of these items? Okay, seeing none, we'll go ahead and move on. We can now vote on these items. Item 1A is appointing Douglas Emery to the Charter Revision Commission for a term to expire July 15, 2024. Introduced by Washington. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded by Councilman Beckius. Any discussion? Seeing none, may we please do a roll call. Beckius? Yes. Raybold? Yes. Shobe? Yes. Ward? Yes. Washington? Yes. Bowers? Yes. Motion carried 6 0. Item 1B is appointing Irina Garakian to the Aging Partners Area Wide Advisory Council for a term to expire June 30th, 2022. Introduced by Washington. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded by. The one with that one. Councilman Chobe. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> any discussion? Seeing none, may I please call a roll? Raybold? Yes. Chobe? Yes. Ward? Yes. Washington? Yes. Beckius? Yes. Bowers? Yes. Motion carried 6 0. Item 1C is appointing Andrea Snowden to the Charter Revision Commission for a term to expire July 15th, 2023. Introduced by Washington. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded by Councilwoman Raybold. Any discussion? Seeing none, may I please call a roll? Washington? Yes. Ward? Yes. Raybold? Yes. Beckius? Yes. Shobe? Yes. Bowers? Yes. Motion carried 6-0. Item 1D is approving the distribution of funds representing interest earnings on short-term investments of idle funds during the month ended July 31st, 2021. Introduced by Beckius. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded by Councilwoman Raybold. Any discussion? Seeing none, may I please call roll? Ward? Yes. Beckius? Yes. Raybold? Yes. Washington? Yes. Shobe? Yes. Bowers? Yes. Motion carried 6-0. Items 2A through 2F was introduced by Shobe. So moved. Second. Moved Seconded by Councilwoman Raybould. Any discussion? Seeing none, may I please call roll. Beckius? Yes. Raybould? Yes. Ward? Yes. Shobe? Yes. Washington? Yes. Bowers? Yes. Motion carried 6 0. We'll move on to our Section 4 public hearing liquor resolutions. 
Item 4A and 4B, I will call together Manager Application of Curti K. Trevitti for Holiday in Lincoln Southwest for a Class I liquor license located at 2500 Tamarin Ridge Road. And the Manager Application for Fairfield Inn Suites Lincoln Airport for a Class C liquor license located at 1000 West Bond Street. Holiday Inn Express and Suites Lincoln Southwest for a Class C liquor license located at 8801 Amber Hill Court and Holiday Inn Express and Suites Lincoln Airport for a Class C license located at 1101 West Commerce Way. Hi. Good afternoon. My name is Kurt Trevetti, K-I-R-T, last name Trevetti, T-R-I-V-E-D-I. -E and my address is 1177 Ironwood Circle, Omaha, Nebraska, 68152. Could you raise your right hand? I can. Okay. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth as you verily believe it to be? I do. Thank you. Are there any questions for this applicant at this time? I do not have any. Okay. Is there any information you'd like to share with the council at this time? No. Uh, if there are any questions, um, please feel free. No, I'm, I'm open and willing to answer any concerns or questions. Thank you so much for coming down. Thank you. I'll be calling item 4C, application of Friends Family LLC doing business as Hero 88 Catalyst Tap Room Catalyst Brewing Company for an addition for an outdoor area, approximately measuring 14 feet by 38 feet at 5730 High Coat Drive. Is there anyone here that would like to speak on this item? Okay, seeing none, we'll go to move on. Item 4D is application of Hub Cafe LLC for a special designated license to cover an indoor area measuring approximately 30 feet by 30 feet and an outdoor area measuring approximately 200 feet by 170 feet at Jane Snyder Trail Center located at 250 North 21st Street on September 17, 2021 from 3 p.m. to 10 p.m. Is there anyone here that would like to speak on this item? Hello, um, Carla McCullough from Hub Cafe, 250 North 21st Street. And I'm the one who applied for the SDL for Golden Ride, and I'm just here to answer any questions. Are there any questions? No, sir. Okay, seeing you. Yay. Yep. Any Councilman Chobin? Yeah. Could, could you do a swift, quick, little, small, sincere plug for Hub and Soul again while you're at the microphone? <laughs> Absolutely, especially after the first two weeks of having to cancel. We've got um, four more after this week, and we can't wait. We're using that rain date that we had scheduled in for oct October 7th, but this coming week is my favorite band, Lloyd McCarter and the Honky Tonk Revival. So that's my plug. So <laughs> Hub and Soul Thursday, Golden Ride when? Friday. Friday. And this, the Golden Ride event for Friday is for registered bikers who are going to be doing it. So it's a check-in. Um, it will have music in the amphitheater, the same footprint as far as fencing from, from Hub and Soul. So we're hoping to just keep that fencing in place for the next night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're there. Anyone else like to speak on this item? Okay, seeing none, we'll go to move on. Item 4E is application of Fucor Inc. doing business as venue for a special designated license to cover an outdoor area measuring approximately 200 feet by 45 feet at Sheldon Museum of Art located University of Nebraska Lincoln, 12th and R Streets on September 25th, 2021 from 5 p.m. to 11.30 p.m. Hi, my name is Michaela Wagner. I'm the director of catering for Fucor Inc. DBA venue. Uh, we are applying for an SDL for a wedding reception at Sheldon Art Gallery on the 25th of September. Are there any questions from the council at this time? Okay, seeing none, thank you so much for coming down. Yay. Mazel tov. Anyone else like to speak on this item? Okay, seeing none, we'll go to move on. Okay. Item 4F is application of Backswing Brewing Company, doing business as Backswing Brewing for a special designated license to cover an outdoor area measuring approximately 67 feet by 128 feet at First Plymouth Congregational Church located at 2000 D Street on September 26, 2021 from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Hi, I'm Corey Sinclair with Backswing Brewing Company. Um, we're looking for an SDL at First Plymouth Congregational Church on September 26th. I'm just here to answer any questions you might have. Can you just say your business address, please? Uh, business address is 500 West South Street, number 8. 
Thank you so much. Are there any questions for the, from the council at this time? Okay, seeing none, thank you so much for coming down. Is there anyone else I would like to speak on this item? Okay, seeing none, we'll go to move on. Mr. Chair, Council seeing Trump. no one else coming forward, I would like to make a motion that we approve items 4A through 4F. Second. Moved by Councilman Chobe, seconded by Councilwoman Washington. Any discussion? Councilwoman Raybould? Um, I have a question for a Sergeant in Arms concerning the 4A and 4B. And I'm sorry, I should have asked it at the appropriate time, but because the applicant has the third DUI, uh, I was a little bit puzzled by the letter that the, the applicant is in good standing with the other liquor licenses, but then there was a, a third DUI. So Correct. what does that mean? So, <clears throat> and correct me if I'm wrong, um, investigator Scott Parker, uh, Lincoln Police Department, 575 South 10th Street. So, I forget the year. Um, a 2017. Year. Yeah, 27. Well, not for the DUI, but he was part of the initial liquor licenses as the owner. And now he's transitioning to be the owner manager as well. So I wanted to apprise the uh, city council of everything that has gone on, um, his criminal history, and like it says in the letter, there is a show cause hearing with the uh, Liquor Control Commission. Okay, so there will be, whether we vote in favor uh, or we deny, there will be a show cause hearing no matter what. Yes, that's okay. correct. All right, thank you very much. You're welcome. <clears throat> Any further discussion? Okay, seeing none, um, let's go ahead and do a roll call vote. Ward? Yes. Graybold? Yes. Washington? Yes. Bowers? Yes. Beckius? Yes. Show? Yes. Motion carried 6 0. <clears throat> we can now move to section 5, our public hearing ordinances, second reading, and related resolutions. Item 5A is change of zone 21029, request of Deb Eisenbarth from AG Agriculture District to AGR Agriculture Residential District and property generally located at South 54th Street in Silver Springs Court. Good afternoon, council members. My name is Mike Eckert with Civil Design Group, 8535 Executive Woods Drive, Suite 200 here in Lincoln. Yes, here today on behalf of Deb Eisenbarth, um, her and her husband, I'm gonna put up this map right away, um, bought this land, I believe in the 1990s and went through the process of, um, it's across from well, there's a quarry here, and it's caused from the quarry where Gaina Trucking currently operates. And so uh, this was a subdivision that was part in the Roca jurisdiction, part in the Lincoln jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. And they got everything approved in the Roca jurisdiction and, and platted all these lots and these existing homes. And her house was here, and her and her husband reserved this piece up here to be developed later. And when we went to develop it, um, there was no track record of the community unit plan or the change of zone going through the Lincoln Lancaster County. And so <clears throat> this was done by another engineering firm again in 2000 slash 2001. And so we're here today to uh, bring it through the Lincoln Lancaster County Planning Department. And this is the change of zone for this portion of the property in what is now actually the city's jurisdiction. So we're before you um, to change that from AG to AGR, so it's consistent with what was done in Roca. Uh, this has been done, we've actually, our firm's done a couple of them where you have a little remnant piece like this and planning generally <coughs> defers to what was done in the uh, jurisdiction of the smaller community. The community unit plan uh, was unanimously approved at the planning department, so we would request that you approve this uh, change of zone. Uh, 20 years later than she thought it happened, but better late than never. So be happy to answer any questions. Are there any questions, Councilwoman Washington? Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Eckert. Thank you for coming forward. Um, I know it's just a little bit early, but I am kind of curious. Um, if we were to zone this AGR, mm -hmm. um, how many lots are we looking at? There in this, so uh, 
Deb's house will go on a lot that comes up to the north here. Mm -hmm. And then there are uh, five more in this general vicinity. Okay. We will come off of Silver Springs Court. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, originally, the, we, they believed it was approved with direct access to 54th, but we agreed with planning that we should just have one access come up here for a cul-de-sac that would serve four lots. The fifth lot will serve off of that existing room. So, Thank you very much. <laughs> Any further questions? Okay, seeing none, thank you so much. Thank you. Is there anyone else here that would like to speak on this item? Okay, seeing none, we'll go ahead and move on. We can move on to item 6A, amending chapter 5.41 of the Lincoln Municipal Code relating to salvaging, recycling, and composting operations to adopt regulations and permitting requirements for businesses and individuals engaged in buying and selling of catalytic converters. And this is a continuing public hearing um, from uh, a past meeting. So I will ask Assistant Chief Jackson to come on up and start us off. Thank you, Assistant Chief Brian Jackson, Lincoln Police Department. Uh, this is a ordinance change that's been in the works for, well, we've had two extensions and we were working on it approximately uh, a month or two before that. Um, Catalytic converter thefts have been prominent in the city of Lincoln. We're over 550 so far this year, as of this morning. That doubles last year's numbers already. Uh, and last year was about three times more than the previous year. So the, the number of thefts continued to rise uh, dramatically. Uh, the efforts for the Lincoln Police Department and the community to combat these thefts have uh, uh, so far been unsuccessful. That is projects, programs, details identified to try to catch those that are inclined to, to steal this property. Uh, the problem being, these occur all across the city of Lincoln, and they can occur on any vehicle uh, that's parked on, the, on, a, on a parking lot or on the street or an apartment lot. Uh, so the, the opportunity exists uh, and our ability to focus down is difficult because they're, they're happening everywhere. Uh, and so we did some research across the, the nation on other ordinances that would help support a potential uh, change that would allow us to enforce uh, certain requirements that is uh, requiring a permit to possess a catalytic converter and generally it's our belief that um, you shouldn't have a catalytic converter detached from the car uh, unless you're a specific purpose and can identify where that car came from and for most people that would meet that criteria if they're scrapping a car or doing something else with the car they can identify where that comes from uh, those that steal these for personal profit have a difficult time doing this and this is one of those purposes now we have uh, been in contact with uh, some of the salvage operators in town and trying to to work through uh, details as to the the most appropriate language that best meets our needs as well as uh, is considerate of their of their operations and so we've been in those conversations we've had several meetings uh, and those meetings have continued up till to this morning. So um, the purpose of this is basically to regulate, um, this, this ba basically mirrors state statute in some degrees. There's a state statute on regulated metals uh, that involves not only catalytic converters but other properties. Our ordinance is specific to catalytic converters. But our, uh, our goal is to manage those who can possess those items uh, as well as those who can uh, work through these as a, as a business, meaning buy, or sell, trade, et cetera. Uh, making it more difficult for those to steal these uh, to do business in the city of Lincoln. Um, we're also uh, looking at records keeping, which is uh, one of the issues we've had with the, the local scrap dealers. Uh, and uh, I can tell you that I, our intent is for, the, for that information to be law enforcement purposes only and for our, our use, directly to us, for our use. Uh, and again, it, it identifies and regulates the transactional needs on anybody selling one of those items. So it, it's an ongoing effort. We hope that this will have an impact on those thefts, at least uh, make them more difficult and exposes those that are committing these crimes um, more easily to law enforcement so that we can, we can take action on those. Are there any questions for Assistant Chief Jackson? Okay, so I would like to thank the city attorney's office also for all their work. Jessica Kirkhoffs, Chris Connolly, and, and Johansi has all been critical in the drafting of the language of this. So not, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Is there anyone else that would like to speak on this item? <coughs> uh, 
Hello, members of the City Council. <clears throat> For the record, my name is Don Wesley. I live at 6825 Platt Avenue. Um, I'm here representing uh, Alter Trading Company and Sadoff Iron and Metal. We've, I've been here before as we first started this discussion. I want to thank you very much for giving us some time to work together. It's been, geez, I think five weeks now we've been talking about this, and it's, it may seem like, well, that's an awful long time, uh, but this is a very comprehensive ordinance. There's a lot to it. And it affects uh, uh, Sadoff and Alter as the major scrap processors in town a great deal. And they, they already are in compliance with the city ordinance on uh, any number of things that they have to do. And uh, we, I will be followed by two experts that will talk about that. But there's state law and city ordinance that requires fingerprinting and photographs and all kinds of uh, efforts to prevent people from utilizing uh, these scrap processors to, to take items that have been stolen. And I think they've done a good job over the years. But the Assistant Chief Jackson, and thank you for your efforts to work with this, as well as um, the Lincoln Police Department and the uh, uh, city attorney and the mayor's office have all worked with this. But despite all our best efforts, the state statutes, the city ordinance, we're, we're seeing this spike. It was, if you remember, just a few years ago that we had copper. Remember the terrible copper uh, problem that we had? And uh, we, uh, ordinances were passed and, and state law was passed. And that, that seems to be a little bit better. But uh, now it's the catalytic converters. And we realize that we need to uh, be a partner with the police department to try and deal with this. Uh, some of our concern is we are willing to work with the police department. We want to help catch these people. But um, as we crack down in Lincoln, then maybe those folks go somewhere else outside of Lincoln. And we saw this when we worked up in Omaha on a tougher ordinance. Um, what happened was they went up to Carter Lake, at uh, a place up there, over to Council Bluffs. These folks figure out ways to get around. But we can only control what we can control. And so we'll do our part. But uh, this is a complex issue. Uh, in fact, I've been told that you can now go online to uh, a couple of sites uh, and, and they will send you a cardboard box to put a catalytic converter in and mail it to them. And they'll, so you can not only just go outside of Lincoln or go outside of the state, you can, you can use uh, the Internet to sell and then use you know, the mailing system to, to send things. This is really bad. I mean, this is happening all over the country. and, and uh, uh, so I think, Lincoln, we, we need to do what we can, but just, just to warn you, this, this is a complex issue, which is why it's taken us so much time. Um, I will be followed by uh, Bob Ellis, who's the Vice President and Corporate Counsel for ALTER, and he's come in to town specially for this hearing. And Steve Napoleon will follow him, and he runs the Sadoff yard here and then also up in Omaha. Uh, but I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. I've, I've worked on this since probably 2005 was when with Chief Pashong was trying to get a, an ordinance to toughen up things and uh, then also represented ISRI, the uh, scrap uh, national organization, uh, with legislation at the state level uh, now for like 15 years. And it seems every time we've tried to do something, they figure out a way around it. And, and we, we, all you can do is keep trying. So. Are there any questions? Councilwoman Raybould? Well, well Donna, welcome. Thank you for being here again. Good to see you. Um, can see. I can ask you these questions, but maybe the salvage operators probably know the, the, the in-depth detail. But since you've been dealing with it for so long, I mean, if we've seen uh, the increase double since last year, what, what are the salvage operators seeing? Are they seeing more people coming in with catalytic converters that they want to scrap and, and get reimbursed for? and and what are the steps that they're, what are they seeing? What are they observing? I know it's, you know, I get calls from constituents who've had their, their trucks that they use for their business operations stripped uh, from the catalytic converter. And it just, just the sheer expense of trying to get it replaced at this point in time, but just the downtime of a vehicle that they need for their business operations. So um, I don't know if you know that, I'm, I'm guessing Steve Napoleon will know that, okay. <laughs> uh, and he will be following me. But yeah, it's it's terrible. And that article that was in the paper was horrible. I mean, nobody wants to see that. So we we want to partner and work to with the police department to try and do what we can. 
Any further questions? Okay, seeing none. Thank, thank you so thank much. Thank you for your time. Bob Ellis will follow me. Sounds good. Hey, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Bob Ellis, and I'm Senior Vice President and General Counsel for Alter Trading Corporation. Uh, I'm based in St. Louis, but we've got 70 scrap locations in eight states. Uh, just brief background on our company. I, I, last time I was here was nine years ago uh, before you guys when we worked with the city to relocate our location to make way for your beautiful arena, and we moved out to 70, North 70th Street. So uh, thank you again for all the help with that, and I look forward to seeing a game at the arena someday. Uh, but Alter, just more background on us. We've been around since 1898, family-owned business. We're in the fifth generation of, uh, of the family now taking charge. We're now training uh, the 30 and 40 year olds in the family fifth generation, including uh, one of th one of the grandsons who's a who's a lawyer. I hope will take my job so I can retire soon. But uh, uh, so we're a very uh, you know by being around 123 years, it, our our entire growth and our existence has been based on our integrity and reputation and good name. So the last thing we want to do, and I know my friends from Sadoff, who I believe have been around for 75 years based in Wisconsin, uh, we, we aren't the kind of companies who, who want to do anything that's going to help anybody who's stealing anything from anybody. So that's first and foremost, because we wouldn't have been around 123 years, Sadoff wouldn't have been around 70 or 80 years without doing things the right way. So that's number one about us. Um, and we've been working cooperatively and in good faith with the city. Again, as Don, I'd like to echo what he said about the police chief and, the, and his, all the police department and the city attorney's office. We think that you know the goal is the same for all of us, which is to figure out and give the law enforcement some more tools. We're already doing a lot of what is asked for in the ordinance, and we're just they're asking to bulk some of them up. And you know we're already fingerprinting. We're already taking pictures, some pictures. Uh, we're getting names, addresses, license, uh, not license, um, driver's licenses, and everything that's already required. And this will just hopefully, when we can get to an agreement on the language on some of the new things that they want to do to help give them more tools, we can craft something uh, between us that helps solve the problem while still not interfering, impeding on our legitimate good business, which is 99% of our business. So. Um, that would be one of my points I'd like to make, um, and I think we're getting close. I think there's a few sticking points that we just need to go over still, the, some of which came up this morning in some redrafts of the language. So as is always in any agreement or language, there's a little bit of back and forth and redlining uh, that needs to be done, and uh, we're committed to do so and to work with uh, the fine people at the police department and the city attorney's office to get it done. And the last thing I would add uh, that we've mentioned to the to the police, and I know they're aware of it in the city attorney, uh, our industry, ISRI, our national organization, has something called the Scrap Theft Hotline and Scrap Theft Alert that's available to all police departments and anybody who wants to report a theft of any kind. So if they, you know, it's a number, they can call in or email in and within the next morning. So if something's stolen and reported on that night, the next morning, so all the scrap companies who belong to our industry organization get an alert that morning to look for it. And uh, it's worked well across the country. We just need to get more buy-in and you know, knowledge from all of the law enforcement people and, and those that we need to uh, have aware of it. And that could be another very valuable tool that our industry is on the forefront of. So that's all I got for now. Uh, questions? Are there any questions? Well, I guess the question about, since we've seen an uptick of 550 thefts, Mm -hmm. This year, last year, 275. Yeah. What do you see? Um, I specifically, I went to our scrapyard today when I got here from St. Louis and met with and, and uh, our, our staff here and asked them that specific question, thinking, oh, has ours spiked by 550 or 1,000 or 2,000 or whatever that would really show an uptick? And our numbers do not show that. So we're pretty flat year over year. We might even be a little behind or close to where we were in 2020. And, and so we haven't seen a big uptick in catalytic converters coming to us. I can't speak specifically for Sadoff. I'll let Steve uh, speak to that himself. But so we have not seen a correlating big jump in that. But it's certainly not uncommon to see more scrap theft you know, across the country. And this is like Don re referenced, copper was the hot item a few years ago and we tried to address that. And I think we've done a pretty good job of that, but that's still an issue always uh, that we have to be vigilant on. But, uh, you know, now with all the COVID and some of the problems that went on the last year or two, people sometimes get more desperate. And if they're out of work or what have you, you see a, a rise in theft and metal prices are high right now. And so it's often correlated to that because of all the building that's been going on around our country right now, steel prices have gone up, which is, 
you know, then brought our prices up also to be able to supply them. And uh, that's usually when people who are not wanting to do the right thing might try and go out and do the right thing, do the wrong thing because they can make more money. And as soon as the prices of those come down, I guarantee you these prices, uh, these thefts will go down too. But we have to deal with it and we're here and committed to do so. Well, I think we appreciate your coming up and all your efforts. But what are your suspicions? Where, who, where's the market for these? Um, I don't think we're getting them. You know, the, the people like us, the, the legitimate long-term companies who are already following all the rules like Sadoff and Alter, uh, we, I'm, I can't say we're not getting any, of course. Uh, you never know, but we're taking all the steps required by the law, and we do even more uh, to, to try. And, but, you know, it, as Don, I think, alluded to, or the, the chief did, you know, they're going out of town. So if we start enforcing more rules, they'll just go to Waverly, they'll go to Omaha, they'll go to Carter Lake. And so there are certainly people out there that are you know paying cash, uh, you know averting the law that it already requires us to write checks for them and things like that. And so I think that's why this ordinance they want some more. The police and the city want more rules and regulations, permits, so that anybody that they stop on the street has to have a permit to have possession of it all. And so, uh, but there's there's a lot of individuals out there who are desperate and they're going to do desperate things. And these are one of the things that they're stealing now, unfortunately. So what you're saying is that they could steal catalytic converters from many businesses and residents right here in Lincoln and just go to Waverly and find a marketplace for them? Certainly can, unless Waverly has an ordinance like this. There are state statutes, of course, in place, too. But, you know, at least Lincoln's trying to do the right thing here to target them. You, you don't have jurisdiction outside of your own city boundaries, but, you know, you got to start somewhere. And maybe there should be a state statute on it. That might be the next step. Who knows? But uh, that's a discussion for another day, I guess. Thank you very much. Councilman Washington. Uh, thank you, Chairman Bowers. Um, Mr. Ellis, Hi. Um, both you and Don Wesley mentioned that there were a couple of sticking places left. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm just curious, what, um, where are they? And do you expect to work through them in the next week? Uh, we certainly hope so. You know, I can't speak for the city attorney, but we've been working closely with Jessica and uh, and the city attorney, and and uh, there are just a lot of times, you know, when you've got several pages worth and a lot of lines. So there's a couple of things still that we need to get through. There was some language on business to business exemption. So the people who are doing this are individuals, they're scrappers, they're peddlers who are going out doing this one-on-one. -on -one. It's not the businesses and auto shops and muffler shops and people that are in the regular business of doing this. And so I think we've worked through the language of that. A lot of that bunch of changes came just this morning, which I haven't been able to see and discuss with my operating guys to make sure it works. But, you know, uh, I'm confident that we'll be able to uh, get, I think there's maybe two or three sticking points within a week. I hope so. Uh, but you never know until we talk over, we're having a meeting tomorrow, as Don said, with our industry folks to go over what came back this morning. And hopefully within a few days, we'll get it ironed out. Okay, thank you. Sure. Any further questions? Okay, seeing none, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, Steve Napoleon, 10331 North 151st Street, Waverly. I work for uh, Sadoff, obviously. Um, family owned business, they've been in business for 75 years up in Wisconsin. We've been here for about 22 years in Lincoln, Nebraska. Um, it, Don and Bob stole a lot of my thunder here, but um, you know we're doing the right thing. I'm, I'm boots on the ground, I'm, I'm the operations guy, so I see a lot of these individuals coming in. Um, we're asking these people questions, we're getting their fingerprints, we're getting their driver's license, we're getting their make and model, um, we're mailing checks where we have to. So a lot of these individuals stealing right now, they're not going to come to somebody like us. As Bob talked about, um, a lot of these are going out of the city and we, we've, we've mentioned that and it's, it's hard to control but there is kind of a black market um, core buyers out there. They're, it's one man in a truck and they're going from place to place um, paying cash for these and these guys are coming into town too and they're taking business away from Sadoff and Alter. So we want them to be held to the same standard we're being held to. Um, you know, and there's some local core buyers out there that live in the city that are doing this too. Um, you know, hopefully they'll abide by this law and we're, we're willing to work with the city police on this. I mean, um, we appreciate them uh, giving us the time to, to get together to go through the new proposed ordinance with them. So um, I'll open up to any questions if you have any. Are there any questions? Okay, seeing none. Thank you so much. All right, thank you.
Is there anyone else that would like to speak on this item? Okay, seeing none, we'll go ahead and move on. I have a motion to amend on this item and we can actually vote on this item as well. Mr. Chair. Uh, may I? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. It's my understanding from our assistant police chief that, um, and what we've heard today, that we would like to delay the action on this item for one week until September 20th and without public hearing. So I would move so. Second. Uh, moved by Councilman Ward, seconded by uh, Councilman Beckius. Any discussion? Okay, seeing none, let's go ahead and do a roll call vote, please. Ward? Yes. Beckius? Yes. Raybold? Yes. Washington? Yes. Shobe? Yes. Bowers? Yes. Motion carried 6 0. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Thank you Jessica. Move on to section 7, 7A, a street name change 21002, renaming West Chitwood Lane to Northwest Chitwood Lane and Hub Hall Heights, first edition, generally located at Northwest 48th Street and West Holdridge Street, introduced by Shobe. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded by Councilwoman Washington. Any discussion? Councilwoman Ward? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. I think we're going to hear from our planning director as well, but um, I just wanted to go back to our original discussion we had two weeks ago before Labor Day came, and, and maybe, Director Kerry, would you like to go first? There. I think it'd be more appropriate to hear from Director Kerry first, if that's all right, Mr. Chair, um, and I will go after that. Thank you. Good afternoon, David Carey, Director of the Planning Department, 555 South 10th Street. Um, perhaps it would just be helpful to do a little bit of a recap of kind of how we, where, we, where we're at right now. So uh, <coughs> under uh, the typical process of a street name change, a street that um, is like West Chitwood that is now going to go north-south instead of veer off and go east-west as was planned originally, uh, it would change from West Hub Hall Drive and then change to Northwest Chitwood uh, going down to uh, West Holdridge. Um, and that is the recommendation coming from the street naming committee. And that is what is in your staff report that's before you for your consideration. Um, there has been discussion about the possibility of keeping West Chitwood as the name um, to go down to West Holdridge so that we'd still just have the one, adi one additional name that would then merge into West Hub Hall Drive. Um, and that is something that can be done. Uh, it would be outside of the normal nomenclature of how the street naming would normally happen, which again would be the Northwest Chitwood. But what that would do, it would allow for the, the single street name to go all the way down to West Holdridge. By doing it this way, it would also maintain the address for the two existing residences. So. Um, that's basically the option that's before you today. Um, I'm going to be clear that no one is su suggesting or wants to do the three different names, which is maintain West Chitwood for two uh, homes, and then go to Northwest Chitwood down to Holdridge. We're not, no one's proposing that, and we want to avoid that. Any questions for Director Carey? Okay, thank you so much, Director. Thank you. Councilman Warden. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd also, if if I could, ask uh, Fire Chief David Engler. I saw him just come into the chamber. Would you mind, Chief, speaking <laughs> to us as well? A couple questions as he comes forth. And thank you, Director Carey. Good afternoon, Dave Engler, Fire Chief, 1801 Q Street. Chief, thanks for taking time to join us today. I know part of our discussion two weeks ago before the holiday was public safety mm -hmm. and the name change and being able to find our residents in this part of our city and doing that appropriately and certainly with all due respect to the, the naming committee. Could you talk to us a little bit about any concerns, if any, you would have from your department perspective of finding our, these two locations? Sure. Um, Across the city, there are some unique addresses that, that have just kind of been there, and, and we've always worked on training our people and, and everything to be prepared for that. Technology has helped greatly. So um, from our perspective, 
uh, I believe that we would have no difficulties finding this address um, if it were to remain the same and just be a little bit inconsistent with the rest of the city. I can't guarantee with 100% certainty that there may not be a problem, but I think it would be minimal if, if that were the case. I appreciate your doing, providing us that explanation very much. Yeah. So um, that's the only question I have for the, um, the fire chief, but I do have a question for our city attorney. Are there any further questions for uh, Chief Engler? Okay, seeing none, thanks Thank so you. much. Thank you, Chief. Johansi Christie, city attorney, 555 South 10th. Thank you for coming forward. Could you also reflect for us um, conversations two weeks ago and some of the conversations you and I have had as well as a city attorney staff with our neighbors affected and what that means for them and for the city going forward based on what Director Kerry said and Chief Engler? Um, certainly I will try to do my best. Uh, what I can uh, provide uh, update information to the council today is that it is my understanding that the uh, potential risks um, with keeping the address uh, as is uh, have been communicated um, to the uh, current owners, whether that was phone conversations or emails uh, from the city attorney's office. I feel um, confident that it has been communicated to the current property owners. Wow, microphone problems today. So thank you. You feel comfortable that that communication process has been established between the city of Lincoln and the residents. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for that. That's all I have. Any further questions for Councilman Rebold? Yes. I would love your help in clarifying what we're going to be voting on shortly. Right now it, it says that we want the name to be changed. Yes. And I'm just going to invite uh, David Carey up as well. Uh, so what has been put before you was the, the typical Northwest Chitwood change of street name, um, and that's coming from the Street Naming Committee. Basically, you, you, you have the, the prerogative to move the approval of a, of a particular name, and, and I would, if you're going to not do that, I would recommend the, the West Chitwood only version of the future. Uh, to go down to West Holdridge. So I think the motion could include that explanation with a second and then discussion and vote. Um, and I guess we'll see where we're at at that point. But it's, it's really one or the other. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's your prerogative is how do you want to take a motion on that? Councilwoman Ward. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I am going to move to, um, I'm not yet, but because I want to say a few things, but I'll get there to, to do what Director Carey just described, to um, maintain the street names as West Chet, Chitwood. Um, but before that, I just want to um, tell the council and those here and those listening that I've had several conversations with Mr. Bale and with our city attorney and our fire chief and, I've, and with Director Carey even yesterday. So thank you for that. Um, I, I wanted to feel comfortable and I want to thank the naming committee. That's not a fun, easy job and certainly one that I respect the work of. But as council members, we do have the prerogative um, from time to time to um, change recommendations when we see fit. And I think this is one of those instances. And I feel strongly that um, given the public safety concerns that have been addressed and legal concerns, planning concerns, that I think it's appropriate that we not ask these two residents to change their addresses, but instead I'm going to move that um, they that those two addresses remain the same. That's my motion. If I'll second it. Thank if that you. Was the motion. <laughs> Do you need a, a clearer motion, David? Um, I I wonder if that motion should include also that the name of the street that extends down the west Holdridge be West Chitwood then. Thank you. I will amend it to include that to be sure it goes to West Holdridge. Is that all right, Madam Clerk? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Director. Thank Moved you. by Councilwoman Ward and seconded by mm -hmm. Councilwoman Raybould. Any discussion on Councilwoman Ward's motion to amend? Mm -hmm. Councilman Chobe? Yes, Mr. Kerry, would you come? I'm sorry about that. I'm trying. Thank you, Mr. Chair, for acknowledging me and 
So just so I'm clear, right now, hub, I'm looking at the map again. There's hub drive, west hub, hall drive, and it would, we had thought about it crossing Whispering Woods and continuing all the way down to Holdridge. Now west hub will stop at Whispering Woods and west Chitwood will start there and go all the way down to west Holdridge. Uh, with, if uh, this motion is adopted. Right, so west hub hall drive um, was not going to continue. It all, we'd already had gone to west Chitwood for those two properties. That's the condition out there today. Um, so the West Hub Hall Drive was not going to okay. keep going. It already stopped, in other words. So that's why we're dealing with what do we do for the rest of it now that it's going to align straight south to West Holdridge. Council in Washington. Um, thank you, Chairman Bowers, and um, thank you for the clarification of this because I can support um, West Chitwood going all the way to Holdridge. Um, I didn't want to certainly leave two addresses and then change a new, get a new street name. So I think that um, because there are very limited safety concerns here, um, starting West Chitwood at Holdridge and going right up to the intersection of West Whisperwood and West Hub Hall makes sense. Any further discussion? Okay, seeing none, Councilman Ward, would you like to close on your motion to amend? Well, just to say um, thanks again to the committee and th thanks to the neighbors for coming back again and um, sometimes slowing us down, as I said to Mr. to Jeff over the weekend in our discussions last week. And I, 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 you know, what's in the street name? I go back to Margaret Reese's article from last week. There's a lot in a street name, especially when you're already living there. And um, sometimes in government, um, we have unintended consequences, and so it's important to, to bring that to our attention when we can make these corrections. So with that, Mr. Chair, I will close. Thank you. Okay, it was moved and seconded. Uh, we had discussion. May we please do a roll call? Becky is? Um, He's abstaining. I'm abstaining. Oh, well, I'm sorry, I didn't realize he was gone. Excuse me, Raybold? Yes. Shobe? Yes. Ward? Yes. Washington? Yes. Powers. Yes. Motion carried 5 0. Okay. We saw the main motion, Jane. Jane. We saw the main motion. What was that? We saw we the, the vote on the main motion. Oh, on the main oh, motion. Oh, sorry. Okay. I didn't hear you. No problem. Close. Sorry. <laughs> now back to the main motion. Any discussion, any further discussion on the main motion? Okay, seeing none, may we please call roll call on the main motion. Yes. Joan? Yes. Ward? Yes. Washington? Yes. Bowers? Yes. Motion carried 5 0. Thank you, Councilwoman Ward. Sure. All right, next is section eight, resolutions first readings are items 8A through 8G. Our ordinances first readings and related resolutions are items 9A through 9J. And we have our pending list date certain, item 10A and 10B. Director Marvin. Thank you, uh, Dan Marvin, Urban Development, 555 South 10th Street. Um, I come before you to ask you to remove 10A and 10B from the pending date certain list. And the reason I'm asking that is, I can put up on the um, projector here. Um, when this first started out, there were some property owners on the west side of the proposed blighted area and property on the east side of the proposed blighted area. And we did get a con, um, were contacted by an attorney who said that these meet the standard of blight, probably meet the standard of extreme blight, and oh, by the way, we'll pay for the additional cost of being able to include those. And then last week, we, we received a, a letter from um, another attorney who represents a client who wanted to do an affordable housing project in one of these areas. And we've been meeting regularly, had a discussion with um, 
uh, the law department, planning department, and we thought that we could start this over with a different shaped blight district that would address a number of the concerns. And as council is aware, this area up here is um, property that's outside the city limits. It's platted irregularly and has a number of difficulties. So there's an opportunity to include this so that if there are um, funds to uh, assist that individual that owns those, um, we could possibly address the confusing um, plat that exists with that property as well. Sorry, I just want to stop here quickly. I didn't realize this particular item was going to be coming up and for discussion today. I have a conflict of interest, and I will be removing myself from further um, hearing and discussion. Sounds good. Okay. Councilman Washington. Go. Go ahead. I'm sorry, just for because I cannot see really this map. So for just for a process piece, do we have this attached anywhere that we could pull it up on our own screens? Um, I have not provided it as an email. Okay. Can you do something to make it just a smidge larger? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> so let me bring it down. So here we're talking about this is Northwest 48th Street. And this this area between the pen marks. Pardon? This way? Perfect. You like that? Yep. Okay. So this, this is Northwest 48th Street. This is Northwest 56th Street. This is the boundary that was used in the blight study that is represented in 10A and in the extreme blight study that's represented in 10B. What's being asked is that some of the property that is on the west side and some property that is on the east side of Northwest 48th Street be included in the proposal that's before you. Yes, and the only way legally to expand the area, we can shrink the area, council can do that, but we can't expand the area without planning commission voting on a larger area, and so this would expand the area. We need to send it back through um, planning commission to be able to effectively do that, at which point it will show back up um, before you for a future vote. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I, wanted, I want to go back and, since Kurt did the work on this, um, share with you what we're trying to accomplish here. Um, since 1997, all the way to 2021, there have been 1,805 home sales in the blight area that is before you, not the expanded one, which means that we are averaging roughly 75 home sales per year. And as you know, that in an area that's been declared extremely blighted and it's an owner-occupied property, that individual that is buying the property is eligible to a state of Nebraska $5,000 tax credit. Um, this was a graphic that we showed early on that talked about the yellow door handles being doors that are purchased as uh, non-owner occupied and the darker door handles are those that are owner occupied. What I believe the state is trying to accomplish through their tax credit proposal is to incentivize owner occupied in areas uh, where they are in extremely blighted areas. So that's really what we're trying to accomplish. I don't know the number that we will have acquired between now and December of 2025, but I think the number is significant. And the amount of dollars that we're talking about here would in all likelihood could exceed a million dollars. So it's worth, it's worth capturing a tax credit for these individuals. And it's also given that the expanded area that's being discussed is not um, something that would impact 
Nine Mile Prairie or any of those other areas that have been in under active discussion, this doesn't impact that. What I would like to do in the future before we load the document up for the planning department to review is to bring back at a future's director's meeting what the actual boundaries and share those with you and make sure that we have concurrence of where those boundaries should be. Councilwoman Washington. Uh, Director Marvin, so just to be super clear, you are proposing that you expand your study area. No. no. Uh, Okay. What, what, what I am proposing is that we include areas outside the current blight area, which would be these areas. The only way that I can do that in the current blight study that I have is I need to go back through the planning commission to be able to do that. Council. So you're not trying to expand the area that you study for blight and extreme blight? No, I think, it, I think it would be a larger, it would be an area that is different than what is before you. Thank you. Go ahead. Councilman Schaub. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. I think Councilman Washington said what I wanted to say, that what you're talking about is a, a future action. Yeah. What we need to do today is not expand. We need to do we something at us administratively today. What, administratively, what I need you to do is to remove the pending item that's on, that's before you and that as we, we get this process going forward we'll share with you the information of where the actual boundaries would be and we can get concurrence from council so that we can um, hopefully address the tax credit issue the pe for the people that live in Arnold Heights. Thank you. Any further comments or discussion at this time? Okay, seeing none, Councilwoman Raywald. Well, I just want to I'm going to support the motion to remove it so that you know we can add those areas and so hopefully if we have five more years about to get the tax credits out to those individuals who would be likely to either purchase a new home or buy a home there um, that they would have that five thousand dollar tax credit available and so that would be at least 450 new homes if we do 75 homes a year that would mm -hmm. benefit from that. So I, I think expanding the area uh, for the future study is great, but I think right now we're just going to vote to pull it from our pending list and then come back and review after it's completed. Councilman Warden. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Director Marvin. I know this has been a, a really long learning um, process for me. And I know over the last few weeks, um, all of us um, have met, as, in, as you have, and other city attorney and other department heads have spent a lot of time on this issue. Um, and I really appreciate all of that. I've learned a lot. Um, but for purposes of today, I'm going to go ahead and move the removal of these items as you've requested, items 10A and 10B from the agenda. Second. Moved by Councilwoman Ward, seconded by Councilwoman Raybould. Any discussion on the motion to remove these items? Councilman Cho. Thank you, Mr. Chair. That's all we need to do is just remove the items and just make a motion to remove and they go away. I'm happy with that. I'll stop talking. Yep. And we need to vote on it, correct? Yes. Yep, okay. Any further discussion? Councilman Washington. I do think this is a, a good proposal to remove this study area or this proposed for designation in order to increase the amount of area that is studied. Um, and it doesn't remove the issue uh, entirely from our docket. I, I mean, from our docket, yes, today it does remove the issue, but it doesn't remove the issue from the community discussion. Uh, and I look forward to moving forward with uh, the goal of providing the tax credit to as many uh, owner-occupied homes as possible and still talk about conservation in Northwest Lincoln. Thank you. Any further discussion? Okay, S Council on Ward. Okay. Uh, may we please do a roll call vote? Raybould? Yes. Ward? Yes. Show? Yes. Washington? Yes. Bowers? Yes. Motion carried 5-0. Let's get, get Tom. Tom. Can I get Tom back? Sounds good. Okay. Okay. Section 11 is our pending list of <gasps> items 11A through 11C. Can I get a motion to adjourn? <laughs> I'm, I move we adjourn. 
Second. Moved by Councilwoman Raybould, seconded by Councilwoman Ward. Any discussion? Seeing none, may I please do a roll call vote? Ward? Yes. Beck is? Yes. Raybould? Yes. Washington? Yes. Schoeb? Yes. Bowers? Yes. Motion carried 6-0. We're adjourned.